Good morning, everyone. I'm the Reverend Nelson Mendoza, curate and priest here at St. Francis in the Valley. Uh, Just to let you all know, Father Warren did let us know that he and Annette made it safely back to Canada. Uh, So I am the sole active priest. We have plenty of retired clergy here. But the training wheels are off. As you all know, I will be leaving in just a few short weeks, so this is a good test, right, Uh, to see how things go. Just a few announcements this morning uh, from Christy, our uh, junior warden. Uh, This is from the governor's office. Uh, Governor Doug Ducey ordered flags at all state buildings be lowered to half staff from sunrise to sunset Sunday, May 15th in honor of National Peace Officers Memorial Day and Police Week. As we recognize National Peace Officers Memorial Day and enter Police Week, we honor our law enforcement heroes who laid down their lives to protect others and those who continue to put the safety of fellow Americans uh, who lost their lives in the line of duty. And we give thanks to those who have put on their uniforms every day to protect us. Uh, So thank you all. I know we have plenty of folks here that have served and have put on the uniform and as well as those online. And we also um, have another announcement from Lou. Uh, If you'd like to come on up. Yeah, of course. Look at all your beautiful faces. I wish I had a picture of every single one of you. Oh wait, that's why I'm here. It's been five long years since St. Francis updated our picture directory. Now I agree with you, none of us have aged in those five years, but we have had a slew of new folks join us and unfortunately some who are no longer here. So it's time. Last time we did the directory five years ago, we hired a professional company and it worked out, but because of their scheduling, we didn't have 100% participation. This year, we're going to do it ourselves in the hope of getting a picture of each and every one of you. To accomplish that, our very own George Grove, would you stand? (laughs) He will be taking pictures throughout the summer and into the fall. George wants you to know right up front, he is not a professional photographer, but he has watched a number of YouTube videos and he (laughs) thinks maybe he can make it happen. Uh, Other members of the directory team are Jenny Urundel. Jenny, where are you? Oh, there she is, okay. Um, She's going to be scheduling appointments and ensuring that you show up, okay. And Jenica Hesco, Jenica is way back there in the back, Um, who will be keeping you informed of how we're doing and what still needs to be done. And of course, Father Warren, who will attempt to keep us on track. Pictures will be taken here at the church and will be by appointment. Our goal is to distribute the new directories at the annual meeting in January. I know that seems a long way off, but it'll be here before we know it. You know, time flies whether we're having fun or not, right? So, so we're gonna get started today with appointment signups in the parish hall during coffee hour. Jenny will work with you to ensure that your schedule and ours can mesh up. So get a cup of coffee, check your calendars, but make an appointment. We've got seven months to make this happen. And The directory team wants to thank all of you in advance for your enthusiastic participation. And oh, by the way, you all are beautiful. Thank you, Lou, and thank you, George. Um, I too watch plenty of YouTube videos on how to become a priest, so it is, uh, (laughs) I think you'll be great with the the photos that George takes. Uh, We have plenty of very, very important announcements. Please uh, consider this your invitation to to explore them further. But now let's center ourselves as we gather to worship God. Our opening hymn can be found on the first page. That's hymn 390.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the, Lord, the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision there was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the second time the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which 
you and your entire family will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they, practiced, they praised God, saying, Then God has given to the Gentiles the set repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 148. Please respond at the half verse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, heaven of heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. He made them stand fast forever and ever. Praise the Lord from the earth. Fire and hail, snow and fog. Mountains and all hills. Wild beasts and all cattle. Kings of the earth and all peoples. Young men and maidens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants. A reading from the Revelation to John. I saw a heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I, have ma- I, give, I give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord.
In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, amen. Please be seated. Who here thinks they are really good at loving other people? You don't have to raise your hands, but consider this an invitation into a deeper thought experience. Do you love people that are outside your family or friend circle? How does that love manifest itself? You see, in our community over the past two years of my curacy, I've seen love manifest in so many ways. At this point, I was going to list all the ways that I've seen you all demonstrate love, but that would take hours. And I know many of you want to get to brunch and all those other fun places today, so I'm just going to keep it to this. There are so many ways, and there are so many languages. Supposedly, there's only five love languages, but I think there are way more than that. So we've established that many of us are good at showing love to others. But what about ourselves? I know some people, myself included, that struggle with truly loving themselves. I'm not meaning that we hate ourselves. However, we struggle with loving ourselves by liking who we are instead of wishing to become something or someone else. Some of us also struggle with loving ourselves by not forgiving ourselves when we make mistakes. I know I've made tons of them. Instead, we rehash the mistakes over and over, wishing we could go back in time and have a do-over. There are also some of us that struggle with loving ourselves because we are afraid that we will end up becoming prideful and start having worldly self-love of caring about ourselves more than we care about anyone else or others. Our gospel today says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. What we need to learn is how to have godly self-love. Godly self-love is liking who God created us to be. God is... Uh, liking who God created us to be and projecting that onto others. It's not prideful, nor is it self-condemning to the point where you have a prideful humility. It is being grateful for how God made you. You as a unique, beautiful person that God is using to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. My friends, consider this. We can't love our neighbors correctly if we can't love ourselves correctly. Now, normally at this point, you'd get a lecture in Greek about the types of love, but it simply comes, comes down to this. Love is an action that you never fully arrive at or complete for others or yourselves. I'm going to say that again. Love is an action that you never fully arrive at or complete for others or yourselves. That simply means love is something that we must constantly be working on. We need to be kind and compassionate to not just our neighbors, but also ourselves. So since I find this hard to do sometimes, I started to think about what I needed to change in order to teach myself how to love myself so that I can love others better. These are the items that came to mind. First, we need to stop negative talk and thought. Jesus states that out of the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I am tired of my heart being so negative. I need to start holding every thought with the intention of what would Jesus think about me if he knew that this is what I thought about myself. We need to start letting Jesus' words of truth and love fill us in both heart and mind. There is a lot of power in our words. After all, God created humanity in his image, and he created everything through the word. Therefore, since we are God's creation, our words also hold power. We need to speak words of life, not death, to ourselves. When we do this, it will change how we speak to others. 
and therefore spread the light of life around us and inside us. Second, we must learn to forgive ourselves. I realize that if I can't forgive myself, then I may not get forgiven. That may sound harsh, but Jesus stated that we will have to forgive others, and when we do not forgive, we will not be forgiven. While I believe this can apply to forgiving oneself also, I think we are belittling Jesus' sacrifice when we don't forgive ourselves. We are saying to God, I am unforgivable, and that is wrong. But love keeps no records of wrongs, according to Corinthians. Therefore, in order for us to love ourselves, we must destroy all those negative records in our heads. Finally, we need to have the thoughts of gratitude for how God made us and to realize God knows we are not perfect, at least in the way that we might want to be. God loves us, flaws and all. In Psalms, David was a man who made mistakes and was flawed, and yet it says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. He understood that even though that he was imperfect, he was still fearfully and wonderfully made by God. We are all part of God's creation, and we must remember that when God created us, he saw that, and he made it good. In short, you really can't love others if you can't love yourself. You might be able to go through the motions and have the shape for it, but in order for us to be disciples, we have to start at home. And that's the home of our hearts, which are curious places formed by years of experience, stories, and other things that have shaped the people we are today. I think perhaps a better way of phrasing that old saying is you can't love others to your fullest if you can't love yourself. I know that I love others and that many of you also love others, but I also believe that I could love others better if I learned to love myself better. If we are quick to criticize ourselves, we are most likely quick to criticize others. If we are constantly thinking and talking neg negatively about or to ourselves, we are mostly, most likely thinking and talking negatively about others. In other words, we treat how we treat ourselves will affect how we treat others. Yes, love is patient and kind, but it, al but it is also challenging and can take effort. May we remember this the next time we find ourselves short with ourselves and or our neighbors. And in lieu of yesterday's event, mass shooting in Buffalo, and in this subject of treating our neighbors with kindness and loving ourselves, I'd like to close with this prayer from Father James Martin. Almighty God, I come before you once again after another shooting. I am sad, God. So I ask you to receive into your loving care the souls of those who were killed to care for those who are wounded or hurt in any way, to, to console the family and members and the friends of those who died or were wounded, to strengthen the hands of the rescue workers, medical professionals, and caregivers. And I pray too for the shooter, as we must as Christians. All this makes me inexpressibly sad, God, but I know that the sadness I feel is your sadness. It is the same sadness your son expressed when he wept over the death of his friend Lazarus. I am tired, God. I'm tired of the unwillingness to see this as an important issue. I'm tired of those in power who work to prevent any real change. I'm tired of those who say that gun violence can't be reduced. All of this makes me tired. But I know that the tiredness I feel is your tiredness. It's the same tiredness that Jesus felt after his own struggles against injustice that led him to fall asleep on the boat with his disciples. I am angry, God. I'm angry at the seeming powerlessness of our community to prevent this. I'm angry at the selfish financial interests who block change. I'm angry that these shootings happen at all. But I know that this anger is your anger 
It's the same anger Jesus felt when he overturned tables in the temple, angry that anyone would be taken advantage of in any way. Help me see in these emotions your own desire for change. Help me see in these feelings you're moving me to act. Help me see in these reactions you're pushing me to do something. Because I know this is the way you move people to action. And I know that you desire action. For Jesus did not stand by while people were being hurt. He plunged into their lives. So help me to answer these questions. How can I help? How can I fight against gun violence? How can I urge my leaders to enact change? How can I help people understand that this is an issue about life? I am sad over the loss of life, tired of excuses for the loss of life, and angry that we are paralyzed by the loss of life. So God, turn my sadness into compassion. Turn my tiredness into advocacy. Turn my paralysis into freedom to act. Help me to be compassionate, to advocate, and to act as your son did, almighty God. Amen. Please join me as we recite our creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Gracious and most merciful God, we pray today for the Ukrainian people and ask for your intervention in this senseless war levied against them by Russia. We pray, O oh God, for protection that there would be peace. We pray for restoration and renewed hope. We pray for the families, especially the children living through the horrors of war and all the upheaval and tribulation it brings. We also pray for those protecting, protesting in Russia against these violent acts by their government. We ask that you would protect and cover and keep these protesters as they put their bodies on the line in the name of what is just and righteous. We pray for the entire world community, including the leaders of our country. Give them wisdom and ingenuity to respond in ways that ends this war and moves us all to a world where your peace abides. Hear the cries of your people, O oh God. 
Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Jennifer, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, remembering especially Bob Hudson, Katie Riven, Linda Ravenel, Lee Connelson, Aurea Mendoza, Clyde Taddy, Jan Hill, Kelly Davis, Daniel Lubovich, Alex, Sally Boucher. I ask your prayers for the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially for Lenny Dupree, Julie Ratley, Barbara Phillips. Pray for those who have died. We acknowledge the nat native peoples of the land on which we stand. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in you newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. You all can have a seat for a moment while we do some uh, birthdays and anniversary blessings. We always love those. Who here is celebrating a birthday today or this week? Anyone here? We got a birthday over here, over here. Oh, wow, lots of, lots of May babies. Well, happy birthday. We, again, we won't ask you how old, and happy birthday to those online. Uh, and for those celebrating any, any anniversaries, wedding or otherwise. We got a, okay, fantastic. How many years? 49, 49 years, wonderful. <laughs> Make sure I'm not missing anyone. I'm sure we have folks online as well. So let's go ahead uh, in community. We will pray for those celebrating a wonderful occasion. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they celebrate another year of life or unity with one another and you. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
All things come of thee, O Lord, of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Thine is the kingdom.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
please join me in the prayer for sending forth of Eucharistic visitors. In the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You have heard the word, now the work begins. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.